I am about an hour outside of town and I literally came out here because I want to find more diverse books with more diverse stories and this bookstore is called Light on Fire Used Books and typically I don't shop at a lot of used bookstores because I feel like they don't usually have a ton of like diverse recs just because I think when people buy books they're not thinking of like oh I want to like have these different types of stories so they might buy what's popular and then what gets what's popular just gets like returned to bookstores or like bookstores will buy things that are popular um or not buy but like um house I guess things that are popular but this bookstore is specifically like supportive and targeting the um lgbtq plus community plus um it also is incredibly supportive of the black community so i just am hoping that i find some really good books that a lot of people like i don't know maybe haven't seen or found or whatever um and i don't know if they just have used books or if they have new books too i hope they have new books too just because I don't know, I love seeing people's selection of new books, but I also want to go over to Barnes while I'm here just because the Barnes & Noble um, in my town is great, but again, doesn't have a ton of great, like, diverse recs, and I feel like sometimes I'm just looking at the same popular books that I see everywhere and I do like reading those, but I want to, like, read more stories by different types of authors, so... I drove an hour out of town to come here um and it was a long hour drive I don't know why it felt so long maybe because I was going over like cornfields and cows and like nothing exciting but we're gonna find some good books we're going to we're gonna go here we're gonna go to Barnes and then we'll probably go eat somewhere I'll show you guys what I pick up if I find anything um I love 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 bookstore shopping with you guys and bookstore vlogs and book unboxings um I also love supporting independent like bookstores but in my hometown we actually only have um I think two independent bookstores and one of them is used books and used books only and then the other one is more of like the historical like artifacts oh no I take that back there's three and the other one is also like more historical like books that are um, like collectors type items like encyclopedias and things like that so I just don't really get over to the bookstore like often in my town unless it's like Barnes because we don't really have a ton of um independent bookstores with the books that I like like contemporary romance and stuff um I will say that there's a bookstore about 40 minutes from here that I really do like um 40 minutes from my hometown that I like but anyway that's neither here nor there but I want to encourage you guys get out and go shop at independent bookstores it sometimes can take a stretch to get there but I'm sure the bookstore owners really appreciate it. Anyway, let's go into the bookstore. serious when I say I don't know if I've ever been to a bookstore that has this many like diverse stories like ever it feels like I'm like a kid in a candy store because usually I have to find this stuff on like book talk or like black book talk or whatever and like I'm just seeing so many books in here that I've never heard of before um like this book I have never heard about this book before but I actually own this book because I like deep dived into like I don't know, finding books that like people don't talk about and they have it in here. There's just so many like books. I already have a huge, huge, huge stack and I feel like I'm gonna bring home like so many more. I have a stack of like I think eight or so and I didn't even know they had this whole like literary fiction section and it goes all the way around and they have like a thriller section so I'm just gonna like look at all these and see if I can find anything else. Don't know why I waited for 
literally freaking out because my Barnes does not have this, which I'm kind of wondering like why. But look, there's a section that literally says Black Voices in Fiction. I wonder if they have that in the romance section. I will freak out if they have it, but they don't have it at my Barnes. This is so cool. They have tons of books that I've seen. Like you guys know, I have this on my TBR and I recently just read these two books and let's see what else we got. Oh, um, this is on my TBR. I've actually read a lot of these, which is like really cool, but they don't have this at my barn. It's so cool. And this one right here, heard about this one, but I haven't like really looked into it. It's so cool. I know it's just a face. something about a thriller that like it's so hard for me to bring one home unless I've heard someone talk about it and I don't know why that is because I'll literally bring a romance home literally just by the cover not even by looking at like what the back says and with thrillers I don't know what it is I just feel like I need someone to tell me if it's like good or not I don't know they have so many books here I've literally never heard of before and I don't know if different barns like do different things with like the books that they pick out but these literally there's so many i've never heard of and they have a much bigger section this is all romance this and around the corner too So funny how like a cover literally changes your view on a book I was looking at this one online and I never would have picked it up and this cover is making me want to get it but then what's funny is like the books over here these covers are not like as I don't know I think I like more plain covers like this that don't have like stuff on it I don't know if that makes any sense but I'm gonna get this one because it looks really good the storyline looks really good um, like this, obviously love this book, but it, you know, doesn't have like the same, doesn't have like all this stuff on it, which is really nice, at least I think so. I never really read these smaller romances, and I feel like maybe one of these days I'll get into it. I feel like my grandma or some of my grandmas, I don't know, comment if you guys read these. I feel like maybe I'm the only one in the world who just like absolutely discriminates against these like smaller romances. I'm sure there's some good ones in here for sure. I was looking to see if they have a like black romance section because I saw the black like voices section in the um, fiction area and so I thought maybe they'd have one in the romance and they don't which kind of sucks but it's fine. Um, I do have these two books and I think there's one up front that I'm gonna grab um, and then I'm gonna like go eat because I haven't eaten yet but they do have a good selection here a lot better than my bookstore at home. So I got so many books. <laughs> I am gonna show you guys half of them. So there's two, um, it's six, seven, eight. I got 12 books which is a lot, like a lot, a lot, a lot. But I'm gonna show you half of them first because I wanna go into Ulta and pick up some stuff in there. Um, it's been really nice, like shopping at a different bookstore. Like I found so many books that I feel like I wouldn't have found otherwise. And um, so yeah, I'm just grabbing the books out of um, where of what I got from the um, bookstore the first bookstore like the independent one so I wanted to get a lot of diverse books which is literally why I came to Peoria because in Springfield we just don't have like a ton of like diverse options and I feel like most people get their books from Barnes which definitely doesn't have diverse options like but we don't even have like when I was in the Barnes and I saw like the section that said like black voices that was so nice to see and in um that barns i also had a lgbtqiap section as well so 
that was cool and we don't have that in ours so um i don't know it's just i want to read stories from so many different types of people different walks of life from small towns from big cities from women men from people with kids um i just want to read all the stories like i want all the stories and i feel like a large part of that is when someone asks for a book like a specific book rec and they'll say like hey do you have a book rec for someone who is maybe like poor or a billionaire or like whatever and i'm not able to provide that it really makes me realize that like i'm narrowing my like reading to like a specific type of story and I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing like if you like a certain storyline but I also think it is important to like try to read different stories you never know what you like you know and especially because I really only stick to like one type of genre like I'm not really reading a ton of different genres I feel like why not be able to like expand so um let me go through these really quickly or as quickly as I can first book that I got it says Joy is in love with Malcolm Malcolm wants to date Summer Summer is in love with love and Fox is Summer's ex-boyfriend so this looks really good it's called the romantic agenda by claire khan and pretty much it's about joy it says 30 flirty and asexual joy is secretly in love with her best friend malcolm but he's never been brave enough to say so when he unexpectedly announces that he's met the love of his life and no it's not joy she's heartbroken malcolm invites her on a weekend getaway and joy decides it's her last chance to show him exactly what he's overlooking but maybe joy is the one missing something or someone and his name is fox Fox seems a kindred spirit in joy. Fox sees a kindred spirit in joy and decides to help her. He proposes they pretend to fall for each other on the weekend trip to make Malcolm jealous. But spending time with Fox shows Joy what it's like to not be the third wheel, and there's no mistaking the way he makes her feel. Could Fox be the romantic partner she's always deserved? So I'm excited to read this story. Um, it just looks really interesting. And then I also got um little and lion by brandy colbert and this says he's entrusting me with his biggest secret and it all feels like a huge mistake when suzette comes home to los angeles from her boarding school in new england she doesn't want to go back la is where her friends and family are along with her crush and her stepbrother lionel who has been diagnosed with bipolar and needs her for emotional support but as she settles into her old life suzette finds herself falling for someone new the same girl her brother is in love with when lionel's disorder spirals out of control suzette is forced to find a way to save her brother from himself but will he ever trust Suzette enough to let her help him this looks really good I feel like it's a nice mix between like romance but also like family dynamic I just feel like this will be a good one then I also picked up I guess I'll get some of the hardbacks out of the way um I got Nate plus one it says save the boy win the boy and it's by Kevin Van Y and this um is by an author I've never read but I also don't read a lot of male authors books either so this will be interesting to get into it says Nate needs a date could Jay be his plus one and only Nate is a behind the scenes kind of guy that's why he dreams of being a songwriter instead of a singer but things change the summer after junior year as Nate gets ready to fly to South Africa for his cousin's lavish destination wedding. The trip is bound to be epic, except Nate just found out that his ex-boyfriend will be at the reception. Ugh, he does not want to face this one solo. Jai, Nate's best friend and secret crush, has his own problems. The lead singer of Jai's band, Infinite Sorrow, quit weeks before a contest that promises to be their big break. But Nate rocks Jai's world when he agrees to sing with the band. Even though Nate's not one for the spotlight he knows it's the kind of stuff you do for friends in return jay vo volunteers to be nate's travel buddy around south africa and buffer against his ex and his plus one at the wedding boy plus boy for 10 days in the sunny jonesburg maybe this summer will be epic after all now that nate's crush is on board will love crash the party this looks good i also am literally right in the sun so i think i'm going to take a break and show you guys the rest of these books whenever I get out of Ulta um because literally the sun is just coming right in and it's so so hot I still have five more books so let's go to Ulta and then I'll come out and show you guys the rest of these books. back in the 
car, I want to show you guys what I got from Ulta, and I also want to show you guys the rest of the books that I picked up. So from Ulta, I pretty much get a lot of the same stuff, so whenever I'm out, I just go in and restock. I got um, the pattern leave-in conditioner. It works so well on my hair. It, like, is very light. It's not, like, super, super heavy, which is nice. Um, and then I also got the pattern hobo oil blend, which this oil is so light. Like, you can see, I don't know if you can see that, but it's, like, moving really easily in there. It just, like, Kind of feels like water, but it's not. Like on your hair, it literally is a good oil. So if you have hair that like needs oil, like additional oil, but you can't put like heavy oil on it, you should use that because that's how my hair is. If it's like too heavy, it like is like sticky and gross. Then I also got the Whey Leave-In Conditioner. This stuff is incredible. Um, this is a spray, so I use this kind of like when I'm on the go. It's like more wet, and the other one is not the exact same. I will say this is a very thick consistency, um, but they just are a little bit different. So this one I use more just like on the go. Now for the books that I didn't show you, I have five of them here. And the first book that I want to show you guys, I need to like move up my car because the sun is moving and it's making the like picture quality be a little weird. There we go. I think that's better. Oh, I'm kind of hiding behind this like pole. So it might move as I keep talking but the first book that I want to show you guys is the book called Some Girls Do it's by Jennifer Dugan or Duggan um, and it says can they go the distance together Morgan a, an elite track athlete is forced to transfer late in her senior year after it turns out being gay is against her private Catholic school's code of conduct Ruby loves nothing more than tinkering with her baby blue 1974 Torino but most weekends she's stuck living out the dreams of her mother a former beauty queen by competing in local pageants. Morgan and Ruby are drawn to each other and when they're together Ruby begins to envision a future for herself she never thought possible while Morgan out and proud and determined to have a fresh start doesn't want to have have to keep their budding relationship a secret Ruby has never told anyone about the feeling she's denied herself for so long. It says this is an unforgettable achingly honest contemporary queer romance about what happens when you find your first love while you're still discovering who you really are. So I thought that would be a really fun book. I also picked up this book. Um, it's called Ties That Tether by Jane Igaro. And it says, when a Nigerian woman falls for a man she knows will break her mother's heart, she must choose between love and her family. At 12 years old, it says her name is... Azari, I think. Azari promises her dying father she will marry a Nigerian man and promises her cult and preserve her culture even after immigrating to Canada. Her mother has been vigilant about helping, well, forcing her to stay with the Nigerian dating pool ever since. But when another match made by mom goes wrong, Azari ends up at a bar enjoying the company and later sharing the bed with Rafael Castro. Castellano, a man who is tall, handsome, and white. When their one-night stand unexpectedly involves evolves into something serious, Azari is caught between her feelings for Raphael and the compuls compulsive need to please her mother. Soon, she can't help wondering if loving Raphael makes her any less of a Nigerian. Can she be with him without com compromising her identity? The answer will ca either cause her to be audacious and fight for her happiness or continue to be the compliant daughter. This one just looks incredible. I mean, I love the cover. Absolutely beautiful. This bookstore just had so many good, diverse books, and I just literally fell in love. So there's three more books here, and this one right here, it says... Imogene, obviously, by Becky Albertalli. And it says, Imogene Scott may be hopelessly heterosexual, but she's got the world's greatest ally title locked down. She's never missed a Pride Alliance meeting. She's never... She knows more about queer media discourse than her very queer little sister. She even has two queer best friends. There's Gretchen, a fellow high school senior who helps keep Imogene's biases in check. And then there's Lily, newly out and newly thriving with a cool new squad of queer college friends. Imogene's thrilled for Lily and any ally would be. And now that she's finally visiting Lily on campus, she's bringing her ally A-game. Any support Lily needs, Imogene's all in. Even if that means bending the truth just a little. Like when Lily drops a twiny, tiny queer queer bombshell. She's told all of her college friends that Imogene and Lily used to date, and none of them know that Imogene's a raging hetero, not even Lily's best friend, Tessa. Of course, the more time Imogene spends with chaotic, freckle-faced Tessa, the more she starts to wonder if her truth was ever all that straight to begin with. 
I just thought this was cute. I mean, the cover is so fun and I just feel like this is gonna be such a good book. Um, I love like books that are set in college. I feel like just the vibes like give very like nostalgic. So excited for this one. And then this book says Accidentally Engaged by Farah Heron. It says, when it comes to bread, Rena Manny Manji knows exactly what she's doing. She treats her sourdough starters like somewhat unruly children. But when it comes to Rena's actual family and their constant meddling in her life, well, that recipe always ends in disaster. Now Rena's parents have found yet another potential good Muslim husband. This one has the body of Captain America, a delicious British accent, and lives across the hall. He's a perfect mouth-watering temptation and one and completely ruined by the unwelcome side dish of parental interference. Rena refuses to marry anyone who works for her father. She won't be dis attracted to his sweet charm or gorgeous lopsided smile. That is until the baking opportunity of a lifetime presents itself. A couple's cooking competition with the prize of her dreams. Rena will do anything to win, even asking him to pretend they're engaged. But when it comes to love, baking your bread doesn't always mean you get to eat it too. This looks cute. This looks so cute. Like she's trying so hard not to fall for him because she like doesn't want to and like I mean I feel like they're going to and then the last book that I got is Meet Cute Diary by Emery Lee and this says Noah Ramirez thinks he's an expert on romance he has to be for his popular blog the Meet Cute Diary about trans meet cutes and happily ever afters there's just one problem all the stories are fake what started as the idealized fantasies of a trans boy has grown into a beacon of hope for trans readers across the globe when a troll exposes the Meet Cute Diary as fiction Noah's world unravels the only way to save the diary is to convince his fans that the stories are true. But how? Then Drew walks into Noah's life and the pieces fall into place. Drew is willing to fake date Noah in order to save the diary. But as Noah develops feelings for Drew, Noah also realizes that dating in real life isn't the same as finding love on the page. With the meet cute diary and Noah's heart hanging in the balance, can Noah accept that some of the most romantic endings are the ones that go off script? I thought this was cute because I like any book that has like... I don't like anything where someone's lying like too much, like too many lies is annoying to me, but when there's something that like someone's trying to keep secret, I feel like it gets my heart going like, <gasps> like are they gonna like find them out? Like, I don't know, I just like that. So these are the books from the first bookstore. I feel like I'm missing a couple. I think I, am I missing a few books that fall on the floor? Is that it? I could have sworn I showed you guys more than that, but. Hmm. Interesting. It must have like fallen on the floor or something. I could have sworn there were more books than that. But those are the books from that bookstore. I'm going to head home and then I'll show you guys the rest of the books when I get home. You look at me like I'm crazy When I shut my feelings out You look at me like I'm different Still you stay cause you feel something real Get so lost in my moments Doesn't mean I don't need you I, 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 I fell in love with your colors They kinda tell me what I'm thinking I fell in love with the way we are And the way we're losing Now that I'm back and I put away the other books I wanna show you the um books that i got from barnes these are books that i feel like i haven't heard anyone talk about but they were in the like book talk section that has like popular books so i i don't know i maybe i'm like on not the wrong book talk but you guys know i'm on like black book talk probably more than anything so maybe some of these things i'm like not seeing but i read the backs of all of them and they look so good so the first book that i got is collided and it's in the dirty air series it's a book two um this is by lauren asher and i actually own book one i just got it and i actually wanted to get all three books kind of like how i got um the books in the dreamland billionaire series because you guys know i rated four stars for all those books and so i like just breezed through them and when one was done i immediately wanted to start the next her writing is just so good and if you open the inside of these it kind of looks like the dreamland billionaire series like the way that it's written there's a lot of dialogue um and every time i pick up a book i usually try to let like um 
do this so I can like see the words and like see how the chapters and stuff are broken up and this looks very very similar so I wanted to get the second one because the first one looked really good um and then I also got um Taking Chances by Molly McAdams never heard of this author before but um I was showing you guys inside the store that this cover used to be like a couple I think they were on like a football field or something maybe not but they were like a cup like two people and it just like I did not like the cover but now that it's changed I feel like this I don't know it just gives like all the vibes it says her first year away is turning out to be near perfect but one weekend of giving in to the, to heated passion will change everything 18 year old Harper has grown up under her career marine father's thumb ready to live life her own way and to experience things she's only ever heard of from the jarheads in her father's unit she's on her way to college at San Diego State University she finds herself being torn in two as she quickly falls in love with Brandon who becomes her boyfriend and her roommate's brother Chase covered in tattoos known for fighting in the underground they're exactly what she was always warned to stay away from but just what she needs so this actually had like 4.3 stars I think on Goodreads which is like wild and I think there were like 43,000 reviews so to have that high of a rating is I don't see that very often I feel like it's very rare to see like 4.5 4.3 or like 4.7 like in that range because I mean you would have to just have so many good ratings so I'm excited to read this I've never heard anyone talk about this either um maybe I'm like behind the curve but it looks like a really good story then I got um Kyland by I want to say Skyland but that's not what it is um and it's by Mia Sheridan this is the author who wrote Archer's Voice and this just looks like a really good one um it says Tenley Phelan okay can we just say that sometimes these authors get a little crazy with these names? Like Tenley is spelled T-E-N-L-E-I-G-H and the Phelan is like F-A-L-Y-N. Like if you're gonna have like a different or unique first name, maybe just make the second name like Smith or something. I don't know. So Tenley Phelan struggles each day to survive in the small poverty stricken mining town where she lives with her sister and mentally ill mother. Her dream of winning the yearly Titan Cole scholarship is all that keeps her going. With it, she will get a free ride to the college of her choice and finally escape the harshness of this life. Secure a career that could one day get her family out of Denville. But Kylan Barrett has worked just as tirelessly to win the scholarship, desperate to leave behind the town that has brought him so much pain. Through near starvation, deep loneliness, and against all odds, he'll let nothing stand in his way, certainly not the girl who's his main competition. Then one moment changes everything. Tenley and Kylan find themselves turning from strangers to friends, tipping then tipping dangerously close to love. They're both determined not to form any lasting attachments but the longer they're together the more hopeless it seems only one of them gets to win only one of them gets to leave and when that day comes what happens to the one left behind i feel like this recently came out and i don't know if i'm wrong about that yeah it says oh i think the cover was maybe redesigned because it says 2023 but copyright was 2015 so i wonder if like the cover is just like a new cover and then the last book that i got is the way I used to be and this is a book that is told in four parts in freshman sophomore junior year and a girl she goes through just like a lot of trauma and it says it just demonstrates one woman's strength as she navigates the disappointments and unbearable pains of adolescence of first love and first heartbreak of friendship broken and rebuilt and all while learning to embrace the power of survival she never knew she had hidden within her heart so i like books that are over like a decent period of time and this is the way i used to be by amber smith um and this was the one that was on the tiktok like book stand i haven't heard anyone talk about this but maybe i'm just like i don't know living under a rock or something so these are the four books that i got and I already showed you guys the other ones that I got at the independent bookstore, but I'm really glad that I ended up grabbing these. And if you guys want to see more videos, be sure to subscribe because I upload videos three days a week on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. <laughs> Bye guys.